All right, so welcome back to the ancient world. So in the last video, we talked about some of the different actions you can take. We talked about build, we talked about expand, we talked about explore. And those are some of the more, uh, some of the actions that have a lot more going on with them. But some of these actions here in the middle, there isn't as much going on with them. So let's first talk about draft here, okay? When you send a worker here to draft, you're going to get this, which is an extra sword. Okay, so if you need an extra sword to defeat a titan, this is one of the ways you can go about doing it. You can just simply draft an extra sword, basically, an extra uh, sword arm, if you will, somebody with a sword in their hand, basically, to help you out. So that's something you can do to get extra attack power to take on these titans. You might do that sometimes, but there's better ways of getting more weapons, like defeating titans and stuff. So, um, but that's one of the things you can do, and it's only sword. So if you're fighting a titan that can only be brought down by arrows, drafting a bunch of workers here isn't really going to help you much because you need arrows for certain titans rather than swords. Same, th same thing goes for uh, certain titans that only require swords. So that's pretty simple. Draft is pretty easy to understand, and obviously. Now, here we have rebuild, okay? You're definitely going to be going here quite a bit as you start getting uh, your civilization damaged, which will happen more often as more powerful titans come into the game. Okay, now you always have access to uh, all the different titans. There's always one level 1 titan, one level 2 titan, and one level 3 titan available. So even if you don't want to defeat the titan in your player board, you can go for one of the other titans that are available instead, if you'd like. It's up to you. Or you can take out both, if you can do so. Or you can just take out the titan that's sitting on your player board. But, as you play the game, um, certain titans will be attacking your town, okay? And uh, one of the ways that's going to happen, before we continue on with this rebuild, is once you reach um, the third round, two new things will happen. When you reach the third round, this location here, known as Grow, which is another worker placement spot, is now going to be accessible. We'll talk about that in this video shortly. That's one of the things that will happen. Another thing that will happen is the level 2 titans over here are going to start attacking you. So, when you defeat a titan in the first two rounds of the game, round 1 and round 2, when you defeat a titan in the first round, the second round, a new titan will take its place, but it will be these level 1 titans instead. And I looked at I looked at all of them, but you know, I like uh here's just a few of them uh in this uh, number 1 category that could possibly come and attack you. We here we have the sand screamer. Here we have this turtle-looking titan called the hill stomper. And then the giant squid here, known as the silent, Sightless Hunter, okay? So those are some of the possible titans in the level 1 spot that will come and attack you and attack your civilization. So that only is something you're going to come across in round 2, because when round 3 comes along and you defeat your titan, you get, um... You get attacked by the level 2 titans. So at the beginning of the third round, these level 2 titans are going to come and land on your player board, and then at the end of that round, they're going to attack you one way or the other. Okay, and so I picked out some of my favorites. Um, the Venom Dragon definitely is awesome. Cool looking. The Scorpion. And <laughs> I just love this red serpent. It's a shame I have to you know, take it on, but still, it's really cool. And that's just something that could possibly happen. So during rounds three and rounds four, you're going to have these to deal with. Whenever you defeat a Titan, these are going to take the next one's place, okay? But then during round five and round six, the last two rounds of the game, these Titans here the level 3 titans are going to come and take the level 2 spot, assuming, of course, you defeated the level 2 
Titan on your player board or level one if you decided not to defeat the level one, for instance. But you're going to have these Titans to deal with. So we have this giant Kragma here, which is uh, like a giant crab. We have this uh, Chasm Sleeper monster, which sort of reminds me of, actually sort of reminds me of some sort of turtle or something. And then we have this really cool magma worm as well. I don't know if you guys ever watched Sequest, but there was an episode of Sequest where they ended up in this underground cave tunnel system underneath the ocean. And there are these weird tunnels and they were actually made by this ginormous earthworm that could breathe fire. And so that's what this reminds me of from that particular episode. <laughs> of Sequest Season 2. So, so the Magma Worm. So that's just some of the different monsters that could come and attack you from the level 3 slot. And obviously, they're stronger. And you need a combination of swords and bows, and arrows, I mean, uh, 12 to defeat that. 13 for that one. 13 for that one. So, they're a lot stronger to defeat, but the rewards are bigger. And of course... Uh, for some of these, this Venom Dragon, you need five swords to defeat it. You need five swords for the Scorpion here. And you need five swords for the Giant Serpent. And, you know, there's going to be others as well. Like, for instance, this one here, the Stone Bean. You need eight to defeat it, but you can have a combination of the eight of swords and arrows to defeat it. So that's, you know, a demonstration of what the Titans are going to need in order to be taken out. And these are also different too. The uh, Sand Screamer is a combination of three. The Hill Stomper is a combination of five. The Sightless Horror is a combination of four. So they're only slightly stronger than your starting uh, uh, Titan. And I do say starting Titan. Like I said, the Frost Wolf is what I get to start with if I'm playing as um, the Unearthers of Umnok. So let me talk about the other player boards. And what you get to start as, if you're playing with them, what Titan you're going to have to take on first. Okay? So we, I played Manta. I play, actually played as the Merchants of Merlum. Okay? Or Mulum. Okay? And so I had to take on this Taurus. This uh, tauren type monster called a Tauracron. Sort of like a wild buffalo, but the size of a tall building obviously so I had to take on that first so that was pretty cool um, if you're playing as the architects of Amnite you get to take on this really cool snake called the Soliristan Serpent so a really cool looking snake you get that thing so that's cool a flying snake really really cool and then if you are the guardians of Gal Galadan you're going to get to, you're going to have to face this uh, calamity vulture as your opponent at that location a calamity vulture so that's really cool and there's other bird monsters in this game as well besides the uh, the vulture so that might be something you get to fight as well but that's basically what you get to fight if you're playing with a particular player board a particular civilization a particular color so that's really cool Okay, now that we've explained how the Titans work as far as, um, you know, when they're going to show up and stuff, let's continue on. So here we have Rebuild. So obviously the Titans, they're going to be destroying your civilization. And when you have two or more buildings, this is something you're definitely going to want to do. You're going to want to send one of your workers here to the Rebuild spot. If there's Ambrosia there, you get to take the Ambrosia. And then um, you get to automatically uh, repair two of your civilization cards or your empire cards okay you get to automatically repair two of them there's no uh there's no payment or anything you just automatically get to repair two of them you do end up using utilizing one of your workers to go here so that is still sort of a negativity that you could have used this worker at a different location but everyone is gonna have to go to rebuild unless you're the luckiest person in the world and are always rolling that one square that's blank which is not likely to happen at very often at all. And then you're also going to get plus one coin. So you're going to build the two buildings you, uh, you, that you have that you need to repair. 
And you're also going to get an additional coin for coming here as well. So that's an additional benefit from coming here. But that's pretty much simplistic. And now you understand why that's going to be a possibility because these Titans, they're going to do some damage for sure. Okay, so we talked about rebuild. We've talked about draft. Let's talk about learn next. So learn here, when you come here and you want to take the learn action, you pay three coins and then you get one of these knowledge scrolls, okay? And there's lots of things you can do with knowledge, okay? Like, for instance, uh, expanding your empire by buying, or should I say, getting district cards, you're going to maybe use some knowledge to do that. And there are some other things you can use knowledge for as well. But that's something you can do, and it's something you're definitely going to want to do from time to time. So that's another action you can take. Then, once you reach the... Third round, and it's currently sitting on the third round. Once you reach the third round, you get access to this action here, which is known as grow. So when you send a worker here to grow, you pay three coins. Okay, so you have to pay three coins. You have to have money to do it, obviously. But then you're going to get access to a new, a new worker, a new, a new worker. So like I said, there's a, a maximum of five workers per player and you only start with three every game so when you get access to grow which is the third round you get to add a new the lowest number of course to your civilization so then instead of having three workers you're going to have four and the next time you go there after that you're going to get access to your last one which is five okay now, there might be some cards that change this up a little bit. Uh, there's one card that let one player change um, his lowest number for the next highest number up. So he got to exchange a 1 for a 4. And so when he finally got to take this action, Grow, when he finally got to take this action, Grow, he had 1 and 5 in the bag and not 4 and 5. But he still had to take the lowest number, which was 1. Still, he had access to a higher number than me, for the first few rounds of the game. So that was um, definitely interesting ability uh, for a card that you can play with this game. So yes, there are definitely some different abilities with these cards that will give some players maybe even a considerable unfair advantage possibly as well. But they still had to pay money for them. So Grow is another action that you can take on your turn once you reach the third round. And of course, once you reach the fourth round, you get access to the B cards, and you replace the A cards with the B deck. Okay, so the A deck gets replaced with the B deck, basically. So that's something to note. Now, we only have two actions left to talk about. We have two actions left. Now let's talk about them real quick, because one is very easy to understand. If you send a worker to this location here, called Labor, you get plus two coins. That's all you get when you visit there, you get two coins. There might be a card you can get that might increase the amount of coins you go there if you visit there, but basically you just get two coins simplistic enough. So the last action, worker placement action you can take is recruit. And this is, you're gonna, you're gonna find yourself doing this quite a bit, okay? Now each player is gonna start with, you know, the same exact, um, same exact military cards. They're each going to start with a militia and a city guard, okay? So when you uh, decide to recruit a new army, basically, um, usually you don't have to pay anything. Usually you just come here, you send a worker here, and you get to choose one of these two face-up cards. If you're playing with three players, there'll be three. If you're playing with four players, there'll be four. But if you're playing with two, there's just going to be two face-up. And that's all you have access to each round, and then two will take its place, regardless of whether somebody took these or not. But then you're going to choose one. Now, some of these you do have to pay. Like, if you want the Arleki Warriors, you're going to have to have one knowledge. So if you don't have knowledge, you can't obtain this one. So that's another thing you can use knowledge for. Obviously, you can use knowledge to build certain cards, but you can also use knowledge to acquire certain armies. But then after you decide to, after you pay for it, depending on how much it was, 
um, or if it was free, you just simply take one of these and then you retire one of your other starting military cards, okay? So let's say I'm going to retire the militia. You're gonna flip over the militia, okay? And then it's gonna be, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have this one face up and this one face down. You're gonna have access to two different armies. One's gonna have two swords. This one's gonna have two swords, for instance, and an arrow. So now you have an attack strength of five just with these two cards alone, which means you could probably take on one of those uh, up there, like the Sand Scorpion pretty easily, for instance. I'm uh, not Sand Scorpion, the Sand Screamer, sorry. You could probably take that one on pretty easily. Now, you'll also notice it has a coin here. Whenever you defeat a Titan, you're gonna get spoils of one coin if you have this face down underneath the attacking army. If you're attacking with this army, and you're not attacking with this one here in my hand, which I just took off the screen, you're not gonna get any spoils, as in you're not gonna get any coins, because this is just something, an additional benefit you're going to get. And then when you retire, let's say I decide I'm going to retire this uh, army next, even though I could have retired the city guard here, I can then have these two underneath, and now I'll have three swords and a coin. Now you're probably wondering, why would I do that? Why would I go from having three on this card to now it just giving me one? And then the next one only has two, which didn't really help me much. Well, there's a reason for that. A very big reason. A very expensive reason. Okay? When you attack a Titan, not only are you going to have to receive the damage that the Titan is going to cause in its wake... When, it, when you attack it, right? You also have to pay your military, okay? And so let's do a demonstration. Let's move that out of the way. Let's just say my player board is here, even though it's not, okay? And I've got my two, uh, uh, two armies here, okay? When I decide I'm going to use the armies to attack, I first have to pay each of them a coin. So my city guard and my militia right now don't have any coins on them currently. So once I use them, I'm going to put a coin there, which means I used that army. And that, that means for the rest of the round, I can't use that army again because of the coin that's there. Okay? Of course, if you end up getting one of these recruited after you've used the army, you can retire them and take off all the coins off the old army, retire them, and put the new one, and then you'll have access to a whole new army. So that's another way you can get a new army as well. You can do it that way. You can attack first, a titan first, then recruit, then possibly attack another titan, maybe. But after, regardless of the case, at the end of the round, if there are any coins sitting on a card, on a military card, you're going to scroll those coins down. And the next time you use these military cards, you're going to have to spend more money. But you're not going to spend one money. You're going to spend an additional money as well. So, for instance, now I have to pay two coins to the city card, city guard to use it. And I have to pay two coins to the militia to use them as well. And so now there's three coins there. So at the next round... Once these coins get slid down, I'm going to have to pay four coins per each military. So you can see that's going to be very expensive. So that's why you're going to want to constantly recruit new armies. Because then you're going to still get at least a benefit of having some extra weapons and things like that in your inventory. So that's something you're definitely going to want to do. Okay? Um... That's really cool. And some of these have other additional benefits, you know, that we can talk about later. Some of these cards will have additional benefits that you might have access to later on. So it's totally worth doing it this way. It's also cheaper as well. But that's basically what that, how that explains the whole functionality of recruiting and using an army to attack. You also have to make sure you have enough to take on the Titan so you're going to want to count up all of the swords and arrows depending on what what will defeat the titan, etc., etc., before you face it, okay? You want to make sure you have enough military strength to take it on, for sure. 
So then you can do that by having access to draft. You can do that by having certain cards that add an additional weapon, maybe a, 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 new, a new sword to the equation or a new arrow, for instance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to add to your total attack strength. But then regardless of the case, <laughs> regardless of the case, the Titan will still end up attacking you and probably doing some damage. But basically, that's how you play this game. I think I've explained most of how to play this game, with exception of obviously uh, explaining how the cards work, etc., etc., um, what the Titans might provide, maybe, possibly. But that's pretty much the gist of the game. That's pretty much the, pretty much the core of understanding how to play this game. So I'll leave it at that for now, and thank you guys for watching. I might explain some of the cards later down the road. Who knows? But uh, for now, we'll leave it at that as the how to play uh, of the ancient world. And I hope you guys understand at least somewhat of how to play this game. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.